option for the XFL. This is a big rundown. So, of course, the XFL is trying to push to sign its top-tier quarterbacks. Now that things have settled with the NFL cuts, XFL now is trying to fill that critical position of the quarterbacks. Now convincing quarterbacks to sign with the NX XFL, the new leadership of the XFL, which includes some key personnel figures from the last generation, are hoping to take the same approach to the 2020 XFL by signing eight quarterbacks to exclusive contracts off the bat to be in the league. Whether this, they, these select quarterbacks are entered in the draft process or assigned to teams remains to be seen. So we don't know if they're going to do that same thing they before or they will assign teams. I feel like I was getting the vibe that they were going to assign uh, quarterbacks to a team, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. Now, who the XFL covets and who they end up landing is a different story. After all, convincing fringe NFL players to take the plunge into an alternate pro football league is no simple ta task, particularly with prideful veterans who are accustomed to playing in the biggest league for significant higher pay. Remember, they will make way more money being a practice squad guy than they probably would make just being an XFL guy. Just consider that. So choosing the league requires commitment and faith. Even if it's only for a short time, quarterbacks under contract with the XFL will not be eligible to leave the NFL until the end of their 2023 se season. A similar scenario developed in the fall when the Detroit Lions attempted to sign Josh Johnson to their active roster, but he was already under contract with the XFL. And clearly it, he's back in the practice squad in Denver right now. It will take a decent enough salary to lure qu quality quarterbacks to go beyond the league's average uh, $59,000 player salary for the season with an additional $20,000 of additional benefits, which includes health care. XFL 3.0 is expected to pay six-figure range for select quarterbacks. However, the question is, how far do they want to push the envelope? Three years ago, many would argue the last iteration of the XFL went a bit overboard in paying quarterbacks to play in the league. Perhaps it was a necessary tactic considering that players like P.J. Walker and Cardell Jones, mother, other, others had standing offers from NFL teams to be on practice squads. But two specific veterans, Landry Drone and Matt McGloin, were paid close to seven figures as the highest paid players for various reasons. Neither player lived up to those salaries. Beyond the lure, financial lure, the XFL has to present itself as a viable option for prospective signal callers. The league has taken some significant steps recently to provide, prove its viability for QBs who are considering the league. Of course, Jordan Palmer's role with the XFL quarterback. He is the guy who's the tutor for the league's quarterbacks, and he's newly appointed director of quarterback development. Trained guys like Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Juro Burrow, you've heard of them before, uh, to get ready for it. So he will be helping the league's signal callers get ready for the 2023 season in February. Now, Palmer and his partner, Biometrics owner Chris Hess, have been instrumental in helping quarterbacks refine and improve their throwing mechanics. Just ask Josh Allen has credited Palmer and Hess with helping him become more rotational thrower studying his body position and perfecting the optimum throwing angles. And really, Josh Allen has been lighting it up last season and potentially could be an MVP this season, though it's very early on. In his role with the XFL, the QB Summit founder and, pa and Coach Palmer will work with coaching staffs from each XFL team to create an advanced quarterback development program to combine physical therapy, strength training, and position coaching from each team into one program. Remember, however that some of these teams already have quarterbacks coach as well. In addition, quarterbacks will be provided with an actual plan for continuous development opportunities. So not only you get paid, but you also get to work with Jordan Palmer. So that is setting up the infrastructure that's ideal for quarterbacks. The question, will Palmer's success with young passes push the league in one specific direction as it pertains to who they decide to sign and draft in the XFL? Uh, with Jordan's leadership and expertise, we will help develop and empower the next generation of QBs. That was Russ Brandon talking about Jordan Palmer. So on the surface, and based on XFL President Russ Brandon's quote, it would appear the XFL will be leaning more towards young developmental signal callers rather than established veter veterans. However, while banking on upside and growth is intensing, the truth is that overall play quality could suffer if the entire league entrusts the QB position to only an experienced pro player, simply because young quarterbacks typically go through growing pains and the teams they are on will suffer as a result a year ago most of the league's high profile rookie signal callers struggled outside of mac jones and late emergence of davis mills trevor lawrence trey lance justin fields and zach wilson had rocky first years as pro so you get the idea that and their teams were some of the worst so that's why you don't want to do that so the xfl might be finding trying to find some middle ground one could argue they would benefit from trying to field the best quarterbacks they can find rather than just the youngest. So 20 
potential quarterback options for the XFL. For the purpose of the Mike Mitchell's list, he's going to separate prospective quarterbacks into different categories, the veterans and neophyte groups. Although some of this might not age well because of typing, you know, players get signed and move, right, but, but also as a result, intriguing options like Josh Rosen on the Cleveland Browns and Chris Strebler of the Jets are off the table for the moment, but they are on NFL practice squads. You could argue that either player has a path to be, neither player has a path to being an NFL starter and that the XFL would be the optimum avenue for them to prove themselves. However, for the moment, he's ruling both of those players out. Perhaps players like Rosen and Strebler could be let go by NFL teams in a couple of months, but for now, they are not options for the XFL. Also, not including gray area of USFL quarterbacks like Kyle Slaughter, Luis Perez, etc. Originally contracted and drafted USFL players who did not sign the rollover bilateral option will see their contracts expire on December 31st. They will become eligible if, that, if there is mutual interest between them and the XFL to join the league in January. So that's something to keep in mind. So their contracts expire uh, December 31st. However, if they sign with a practice squad like Kyle Sloter and Luis Perez did, their contract should be over now. We'll have to see how that pans out. Also, let's get the pipe dreams out of the way. No Cam Newton or Colin Kaepernick. Those would be entertaining and buzzworthy, but that's not going to happen. RG3, Ryan Fitzpatrick, or even Matt Leinart, who jokingly teased a return upon the announcement of the Rock buying the XFL in 2020. None of these options are realistic. No matter how fun it seems like there. There are two XFL 2020 players that are good bets to land on 2023 XFL rosters, Cardell Jones and Eric Dungy. The likelihood is that both will enter camps as backups with something to prove. A Bob Stoops Dungy reunion is certainly in the cards. In many ways, Cardell Jones and Eric Dungy are similar in that they fall under what the what could have been. All eight XFL teams have 45 active players on each game day. It's likely that the teams carry three quarterbacks, each with potential a third QB stashed on their five-player practice squad. So at a bare minimum, Mike Mitchell expects to have the XFL to have 24 quarterbacks when the 2023 season starts. Many could come from this group, but also new additions could arrive in January when the NFL season ends and more players become available. Also the USFL season too, or CFL season, I should say. There are 20 available quarterbacks who the XFL could target and sign. So potential veteran quarterbacks for the XFL. Here we go. Brett Hundley, Blake Bortles, Deshaun Kaiser, Garrett Gilbert, Kurt Benkirk, Kevin Hogan, and Ryan Finley. All seven players above have vast NFL experience and have, many have started games in the league. The doorway back to the NFL has opened and slammed shut on them multiple times. It's likely that more, that more opportunities that to latch on the back end of a roster could arise again. Like in the case of Kurt Bernick, after recently revealing that he had conversations with the XFL, a few days later, Bernkig worked out for the Ben Kirk, worked out for the Chicago Bears. So who knows what's going on there? The reality is, however, that the door on playing time and starting opportunities are completely shut on veterans like Kurt Ben Kirk. Ben Kurt. There's no shame in being a career third or fourth stringer, and the pay is good if you can maintain a spot, but the former Virginia standout has been in the NFL since 2018 and only has a kneel down worth of regular season playing time to his credit. Bortles almost falls into the Cam Newton, Colin Kaepernick pipe dream category, convincing a veteran like him to join the XFL could take some serious convincing. Earlier this year, break Bortles asked for and was granted a release from the New Orleans Saints when the team signed Andy Dalton to back up James Winston. The reasoning was that he wanted another opportunity to make a roster as a backup and a more viable chance on playing as the next man up. That opportunity did not surface for Bortles. It's possibly that it could still could, especially with veteran contracts not guaranteed after week one of the NFL season. But if Bortles is looking to play and be a starter again, the XFL might be the 30-year-old former first-round pick's last chance. Bortles has a cult following who would love to see him try and resurrect one, his once promising career. Brett Hundley, another former NFL starter with the sand running out of his hourglass. The Baltimore Ravens recently cut the 29-year-old former UCLA star for younger backups all after starting nine games with the Packers in 2017. Huntley only played in two NFL games since mop-up duties with the Arizona Cardinals in 2019. Recently worked out for the Vikings and could get another shot, of course. But his starting and even number two backup days in the pros have long since passed. 
Kevin Hogan, another veteran signal caller, was released. The Houston Texans let him go in August, former fifth-round pick out of Stanford, been with a bunch of teams. After starting 15 games as a sec rookie second-round pick out of Notre Dame in 2017, now the 26-year-old Deshaun Kaiser has fallen off the NFL ra radar. His disastrous tenure with the Cleveland Browns lasted only one year after he went winless and led the league in interception. Kaiser went from a promising prospect to journeyman fringe player. He was traded to the Green Bay, spent time in Las Vegas, practice squads, blah, blah, blah. Ryan Finley is a young veteran, former fourth-round pick, 2019, out of NC State. First-team All-ACC player who had four NFL starts under his belt. And the 27-year-old has also been cut out of the NFL since 2021. Typical players who take the alternative pro league plunge. Those are have been out of the NFL loop for a season or more. Finley could look towards the XFL to write a bias his career. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> the player who will most align with the XFL, provided that he doesn't sign with an NFL team in the coming weeks, Garrett Gilbert, uncrowned AAF MVP for the Orlando Apollos, is on the open market and has a lot of XFL connections. Most notably, June Jones, Randy Mueller, and some others. 31-year-old Gilbert was well-traveled, though, uh, which could see him maybe return, maybe with Heinz Ward. And the AA, with this AAF. Other guys, Cole Kelly, De'Ara King, Cole McDonald, Aquel Glass, Davis Cheek, Carson Strong, Anthony Gordon, Felix Harper, Ryan Willis, Jack Conan, James M M Morgan, Nate Stanley, and Steven Montez, which that is 13 names, with limited to no playing experience in the NFL, excluding Ryan Willis' stint in TSL. This can be labeled as a neophyte group. A few of these players have worked out for the XFL during their six showcases this summer. He's got a breakdown of all the these players as, as well. So let me know what you think. Do you think Mike Mitchell has uh, uh, anybody on these lists? He's got a full breakdown of every single one of these guys. Definitely an article to check out. Are there other names that the XFL, that Mike Mitchell should have included in this article of 20 potential quarterback options for the XFL let us know in the comments. Drop a comment on a quarterback or two who you would like to see in the XFL.